Welcome back to SK Hobbies AZ and on this episode we're going to No, it's not an unboxing, but we're going to give you a three month review. So stay tuned. All right, well, welcome back to SK Hobbies AZ. And uh, as you can see, we got the base camp here. And we purchased this back in June and did the unboxing, I believe, June 20th. And we've been running it for almost three months now. And I figured I'd do a kind of like a follow up on my thoughts about this rig and uh, some of the reasons why we did some changes on it. Um, so you can see we got here, we've done, done, I wouldn't say a lot of upgrades because when we ran this, and if you go back to my previous videos, you'll see that uh, out of the box, it performed very well on the course behind me here. And uh, there was just some minor, minor issues. You know, we needed to add a little weight to the front. You know, when it was going up like this, it wasn't staying too planted down, but when we did that, you know, we have, here's the stock tires. I haven't gotten rid of them because, you know, they are a pretty grippy uh, tire out of the box. It's just, I wanted some bead locks in there. And, you know, so I, I don't know if Axial got these out of the, you know, the same plant as uh, Proline did. I, I don't know that, but we did put some Proline Hyrax tires in its place and we didn't go really expensive on the rims. These are the Enjora beadlock rims uh, and they worked pretty good but let's get down to looking under the hood so under the hood here this this body um, I don't have a break a crack or anything on it and if you look at uh, my videos this thing has taken some tumbles including a uh, I did a YouTube short a while back of uh, out at Joe Max where it took a really big tumble down. Nothing happened to the base camp. Nothing happened to the shell. I mean, there's some scratches on it. You can see the windowing here. You know, we got some scratches on the window. But overall, I know that a lot of people were talking about, you know, the shell itself. And, you know, it feels kind of cheap. It's bendable. But it really served the purpose. Uh, it, it protected this from getting damaged at all. So... I would say that uh, Axial kind of knocked it out of the park with this shell and, you know, its durability. So, not I, I haven't changed this out yet. This is going to get a makeover here soon, and that's why I kind of wanted to do this, this review. Um, things that we changed on it. Not necessarily for performance did we change it, but we changed it uh, primarily just to see what, what would happen if we did do it. Uh, the ESC that came in the box, which I have right over here, the Spectrum ESC that came in here. And uh, this one is, you know, it says waterproof, brushless, you know, it's a, you know, it says it's a two to three S LiPo. Um, I, I actually ran this on three S. Um, I did run it on a two S battery, I believe for my first, first video out of the box on this. And then uh, automatically got some 3s batteries and and ran that but i haven't gotten rid of this but the main reason i did was because this doesn't have an on and off switch and that is that it's important that we have that on and off switch just to be able to turn the vehicle off especially if you're out on the course i don't want to have to undo the shell disconnect the battery um, especially for my kids so i wanted to have an on and off switch so we did put that hobby wing 1080 esc in there which has that on and off switch with that, we had uh, done a couple of upgrades on the motor, and we originally put in, you know, the uh, the Crawlmaster uh, Sport, you know, bottom line of the Crawlmaster motors, and that was setting at a 16T, which was in on Holmes Hobbies is right at that that uh, that the high limit of what they recommend. Um, the the lower limit was the 13T, and so we did buy that motor and then change over and put in the Holmes Hobby and we actually went with the expert right here on that Crawlmaster 13T which this one's 
rebuildable. So if there's anything wrong with the br uh, the brushes in it, we'll be able to you know do that. Um, the dynamite motor that came in it, I actually have right here. I haven't gotten rid of it. We're we're gonna put that into uh, our element and run that in there. Super quiet motor. I don't really have any problems with it with it uh, with the uh, the climbing capabilities, the power that came out of that motor. It worked really really good out of the box. And uh, I've actually cycled it into uh, my son's um, element that he had for a while. And then we kind of upgraded his motor to a Holmes Hobby. And then so I've got it in this build. This is going to end up being our, our scale build that we're going to do. And we're going to completely forerunner it out. So the next thing that we were looking at was the servo. The servo was in it was okay. That Spectrum servo, um, which... I don't currently have here. It's an inst it's an actually installed in my son's rig, uh, but it is the uh, Spectrum S614 servo that came in it. That servo, it it was really slow in maneuvering. Like, wasn't really getting the turning that I wanted out of it. So I went ahead and swapped it out for my HBL550 by NKS, and. Oh, that it, it turned out awesome. It was really, really torquey. It really, uh, really handled everything we needed to do with it. And that's basically what we did is swapped out the electronics. Now, when Axial built this, they built it for a base platform that people could change up and do whatever they want. They're, they've been turning away from doing the kits and all that stuff. So it would be awesome if they came out with a base camp kit. But I don't think we're going to see any of, any of that anytime soon. So we got, that's pretty much what we upgraded on it. Um, I did replace the controller because I have a Spectrum DX5C. You can see I got my, my neck lanyard on it, my tactical RC lanyard. But it did come with the, uh, the SLT3 right here. Didn't really have a problem with that. Matter of fact, the, uh, the receiver that's in here is still in there. I haven't even changed out that receiver. I just connected it up to here. This controller is actually going to go with that other build I was just showing you for the future, and I'm going to get another Spectrum receiver for that. So, the the next thing that we uh, we upgraded on was we actually put some pancake weights in the front right here, and I'll see if you guys can see it, but it's it's right in there. It mounts to the inside of the uh, Endura rims. And it just adds a little bit of weight up front. So that's what we did for weight wise. And then we were starting to uh, don't really think the base camp needed it, but we did it anyways. Um, and that was upgrading the uh, to the Rock Pirates RC shock towers, both front and rear. Now, my wife's rig, she has that SCX 10 3 that I, you know, bought it as a gladiator, did a conversion on it. Uh, the, the steering on it wasn't really that good. You didn't get full steer on it. And a lot of that was due to the pan hard mount. So we put ahead and put on the Rock Pirates RC's uh, shock towers on it, and it fixed that problem. I went ahead and we got a second set and put them on to the base camp here. And I just, I think it made it better. Um, it does move. You can see the pan hard usually sets right around here, which I still didn't have any interference on the base camp's uh, servo, but with bringing it back here, cleared it up completely. So I do like these shock towers and I do recommend them. And we're gonna be doing some more upgrades and I'm gonna get a couple of more base camps to build off of, I believe. And with that, I, you know, I think we're gonna throw these shock towers on, on those too. Battery wise, we're still we're running 3S batteries in these. We are, uh, uh, they're 2000 milliamp hour little shorty packs that we mount here. I left this on here for now, this back battery tray. I think eventually I'm gonna remove it because I think all we're gonna run is shorty packs. But uh, I left this on here just because I do have some 3S long packs. They're the 5400 uh, Ovonics. And because me and the wife like to do trailing and we're not going to be doing any kind of major crawling. We're just going to be going down some washes and, you know, take the dogs for a walk, especially since cooler weather's coming. So I left these battery trays on here so I could throw one of those bigger packs on it, not be a problem. We can go 
for a three hour hike. So with that, that's all we've upgraded so far. There are some future upgrades I think that uh, I'd like to do, um, but we'll discuss, discuss those when, uh, when the time comes up. Underneath, you know, some people were complaining about the thinness of the links. I don't really see, I haven't had any bending of them. Everything seems to look pretty good. Um, no issues. Now I do see, and I just gonna correct myself, I just said I don't I didn't see any bending. So there is some bending right here on this this rear. So this would be the uh, the rear pa passenger side. You can see that it's bent right there. Let's see if I can turn it around so you can see it better that way. So that one did bend. And uh, I just noticed that just now. So these are eventually going to get upgraded. I think I'm gonna upgrade them to the, uh, the standard SCX-10-3 three ones. Um, but I didn't really see any issues before. And actually, I didn't even notice that that was an issue until just now. So thank you guys for helping me out with that. So, but up until, and that might've just happened this last weekend with the tumble I took with it, but the, uh, I hadn't really seen any issues up to that point. So do I think that they need to be replaced? No, I don't really think they do. I think I could actually probably bend that back into place and it'd be perfectly fine. But, uh, but I, but those, those probably do need to get upgraded if you're going to be doing a lot of super crawling. But if you're just doing the, the trail truck thing, I think that that's perfectly fine, those guys. So other than that, I think that's all that I've got on what we've done to it, my outlook. If I could go out tomorrow, I'd go out and buy another one today. I think the, uh, the base camp is a great platform. I love the direction that Axial has taken with the SCX-10 III. I like the new transmission. I do not like the standard transmission that comes in the SCX-10 III builds, builder's kits, and all of those, uh, like the, G, uh, the JUL and uh, the Gladiator. I don't really like that transmission. I think there's better options out there for that. Not saying that I wouldn't go out and buy one, but that is one of the issues that I'm gonna be fixing in my wife's 10 III uh, Forerunner build is that transmission. I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna try to see if I can convert it into this, uh, the base camp style transmission, or if I'm gonna get a Vanquish transmission or go completely different. I don't know about that. But on this platform, this transmission staying in here, I'm gonna make this guy perform even better. Uh, we're gonna be uh, putting some more Rock Pirate stuff on here. We're gonna be getting a new shelf for it in the future. We're gonna be changing out drive shafts. We're gonna be adding a little tiny bit more weight to the front and a little bit of weight to the rear. And I think we're gonna probably do that with the, uh, the diff covers and uh, maybe putting some, uh, some brass knuckles on the front. So, so we'll see about that. But if you guys got any questions, jump down in the comment section and I will answer them the best that I can. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and bash that bell. I'm Stitch, SK Hobbies AZ, and I'm out.